March 22nd, 1993, in Winter Haven, Florida. The Cleveland Indians were being rewarded by manager Mike Hargrove for hard work with a day off, their only day off of spring training. It should have been a day of rest and fun. It turned into the darkest day in Cleveland sports history. It was the day two Indians pitchers were killed and one other was critically injured, the result of a horrific boating accident. Pitcher Tim Cruz invited pitchers Steve Olin and Bob Ojeda and their families to his 170-acre ranch for a barbecue, some horseback riding, maybe even to throw a line in the water of Little Lake Nelly to fish. That evening, Cruz took Olin and Ojeda out onto the lake to look for gators. There was beer and vodka on the boat. And with nightfall upon them, Cruz gunned the engine of his boat and at a high speed misjudged a 185-foot wooden pier and crashed. Olin was killed instantly. Cruz died hours later. Ojeda suffered massive head injuries but survived. Indian strength coach Fernando Montez was also at the Cruz ranch, but not on the boat. He heard the crash from the shoreline and called Indians general manager John Hart and Mike Hargrove to break the awful news. The Indians were now dealing with much more than a young baseball team on the field. They were dealing with death. We grieve the loss of, of these two men, what they mean to us. Both had young families, young children. As an organization, their families are our largest and most important concern. Their first concern, as is the whole organization, is what can we do for the Cruz family and the Olin family? We'll get over this. I don't know about the Cruz family. Daylight came the next day. The accident scene was very specific. There was the boat, the pier, there was blood, and there were also families destroyed. Steve Olin was survived by his wife, Patty, a three-year-old and seven-month-old twins. Tim Cruz left his wife, Lori, and three children. And the Indians were left numb back in Winter Haven. Could they even get back to playing baseball? Players drifted back into camp. They were two weeks away from heading north for the 162-game season, but it wasn't going to be easy. I'm not feeling with it very well at all. It was uh, you know, not even baseball-related. I'm, I'm my best friend. He's the best man at my wedding. And what, the reason I am where I am today is because of him. As sad as it is, it's something that matures you as a person, helps you deal with the facts of life. It's going to keep our team more and more together, you know, and love each other more. And, and we're going to play hard, you know, to try to win this year. Steve and Tim would want us to be strong for them, and we just have to play hard, and hopefully we'll see what happens this year. The Indians were now in the news every day, and every day brought Winter Haven another sad chapter. One afternoon, Olin's wife, Patty, appeared in front of the media. I know that he would not want me to just get emotional. He wouldn't want anybody to do so. I'm just going to tell them that what a great daddy he was and what a great husband he was. And I have you know, tape. I'm not going to spare that. Midweek, the Indians organized a memorial service for the victims. Every major league team that trained in Florida sent representatives. A Garth Brooks song, The Dance, played in a teary-eyed auditorium. I could have missed the pain, but I'd have had to miss the dance. The baseball season came, and in Cleveland and everywhere else the Indians played that year, there were moments of silence for their loss. Now, there were better times ahead for the Indians. Their new ballpark opened in 1994, and all of their young talent blossomed to become great players. They were big-time winners. But even on their greatest night since the 50s, the night they clinched the Central Division at a roaring Jacobs Field, 
as they gathered in center field to raise their championship flag and the Garth Brooks song, The Dance, played again. The Indians were in tears, remembering their teammates who weren't there. The conclusion to the story was, Tim Cruz was legally intoxicated driving the boat. Two families were left without a husband and father. Bob Ojeda lived a haunted existence with constant flashbacks of the crash. It was all supposed to be so different, just a day of fun. Instead, the darkest day in Cleveland sports, 30 years ago, the boating accident on Little Lake Nellie.